generally when we look at your career, if you just sort of pick out some of the key highlights for you, how it all started, the first sort of moments as you joined uh, West Ham. Yeah, career started at West Ham, uh, debut at 17, uh, home to Tottenham, scored after 25 minutes, but beat Tottenham 3-0, doesn't really get much better than that. So it was a, a great start for my career. Um, I think my debut for Everton as well was a was a great moment for me. Uh, hat trick as well on my debut against Newcastle, one four nil. Um, and I think the the pinnacle of anyone's career really is playing for your country. And I, I made my debut against Sweden for England as well, first to seven caps, and uh, very proud of my debuts and my England caps, which is great. You set for yourself a bit of a target, I think, uh, on goals. You wanted to get over 200, you want to get close to... Mm. See, I mean, amazing ability to score goals. Is that what was the adrenaline every time? Um, well, I, I think um, my hero as a kid was a, a forward called Brian Pop Robson, not the one who played for Manchester United, the one who played for West Ham, Newcastle, Sunderland. He was a small player like myself and uh, he scored 200 league goals. And I thought, well, if Pop Robson could do it, I can do it. And I, I, I was fascinated with stats and um, I mean it's become a big part of the game now, stats, everyone wants to know about who's had shots and goals and etc. Um, and when I was a kid I was fascinated with stats and I just thought that was a good stat if you could score 200 league goals that means you've done something right and uh, it's, it's the equivalent of playing, I don't know, 15 seasons and getting your 15, 16, 17 goals a season consistently. So it proves you're a consistent goal scorer rather than someone who's, who has one good season and then doesn't score any more goals. You know, my, my target was always to score 200 league goals and I'm pleased to say I achieved that playing for Leicester against Tottenham again. And uh, it's quite funny really, my first league goal, West Ham against Spurs, 100th league goal, Everton against Spurs, 200th league goal, Leicester against Spurs. So well, you could say Spurs was a lucky team for me, but I was very proud to achieve the 200 league goals. There's always a lot of talk about players not going back to teams. You did it very successfully. Yeah, it's, uh, I think um, I was very lucky and very privileged to go back to West Ham. West Ham was my team. Um, I left because I felt it was the right thing for me to do, to go to Everton and try and win lots of trophies. I didn't win any trophies, um, but I came back to West Ham and Harry Redknapp brought me back to the club and I was very lucky to, to play for the club for for the two spells and it's only happened to uh, I think about six or seven players in the whole of West Ham's history and I'm one of the one of those that has played for the club twice so um, yeah it was great to come back and, and just to have a little bit more success and, and be the top scorer again which my my aim every start of every season was to be the top goal scorer. And who are your favourite partners to play with? Um, I think Frank McAvenny was probably the best partnership I had um, again, going back to stats, 54 goals in one season together, just the two players, which was it was a wonderful season. We finished third as well, the, the team, and perhaps should have won the league back in 1986. Um, I enjoyed playing with Paul Goddard at West Ham as well, good player. Um, and then when I went to Everton, I played with Graham Sharp, I played with Peter Beardsley. And then at Leicester, I played with Emil Heskey, who for me was a, was a fantastic player to play alongside. And you know, he often took a little bit of stick because he didn't score the goals but as a team player Emil was a fantastic player and you know, I was very lucky to play alongside such good players. And when you look at West Ham today they've had a bit of a uh, Sam Allardyce has a bit of a stick I think they announced yesterday that he's continuing. Mm -hmm. what, what, how do you feel about that? Well I, I think um, I mean I said that Sam was the right man for the club when when West Ham got relegated and his his brief was to get the club back into the champ back into the Premier League from the Championship which he did um, they then finished 10th this season, finished 13th, not quite a good a season. Um, the problem Sam's got is the West Ham fans, people like myself, have been brought up to watch good quality football and might not win every week, in fact probably don't win every week, <laughs> but um, you, the, the fans expect a certain style of football and I don't think they've seen that this season, not consistently anyway, and I think that's the problem uh, where Sam's concerned. So next season they've got to play a bit more better football. Uh, and he's been set a target to finish in the top 10, which won't be easy to achieve because it's such a competitive league. Um, but I think Sam will be there for the foreseeable future, and especially with the move to the Olympic Stadium on the horizon. Yeah, I mean, they've definitely put him under slightly more pressure again by saying you've got to finish 10th. Yeah, of course. But I think, you know, we've already spoken about myself, I think players, managers, you, you should thrive under a target. If you, know, if you don't think you can achieve that target, you might as well walk away now and say, well, I can't do that. You know, Sam obviously feels he can, and they finished tenth the season before. There's no reason with a couple of extra players, you know, a few good signings, 
there's no reason why they can't compete. It's, it's very, very difficult to get in the top seven now, very difficult, but there's places eighth, ninth, tenth. I think that's where West Ham could look to achieve over the next two or three seasons. And when you look back over all the goals that you've scored, when you sort of think back, which you must mm. do whilst you're driving along, and all the games you probably remember like they were yesterday, yeah. what is that goal that always comes back to you? Good question. Um, it sounds really sad to say this, but probably my first goal, because I think that was it was the goal that launched my career. Um, it meant so much to me because I, I was a West Ham fan, I was a crazy West Ham fan, and within 18 months of joining the club, I actually was scoring alongside my teammates, Phil Parks and Ray Stewart, Alvin Martin, Alan Devonshire. I was playing alongside those players, and you know that thrill of scoring as a 17-year-old. I mean, I scored hundreds of goals after that, but that one goal was a special one for me and luckily the cameras were there that day and I've got it on the old VHS tapes and I can look back and, and sort of think, yeah, no, that was, that was a great thrill for me to score that goal. So, you know, I'd love to say there was lots of goals since then. Every, every goal was special to me, but I think that first one was, was the real big one. Was the football was always the only thing you ever wanted to do? It was, yeah. I mean, um, I, I think I've I knew from an early age that I could do what was easy for me wasn't easy for other players. I think other players they couldn't score the goals. Uh, for me, it was easy. I, I just some somehow whether it was just a you know a given talent. You know, I was just born with the talent to to score goals, and I found it easy to score goals. I, I mean, the, the rest of the game was hard, running round and you know making tackles, heading the ball, etc. All that was hard for me. But if you put me in front of the goal, I knew where the goal was and I, I found it easy to score goals. And I knew from the age of probably six or seven that I had a different talent to anyone else. Um, but I was lucky I had, a, I had a good dad who told me what to do, what not to do. And he helped and encouraged me, pushed me in the right direction, which, you know, not all kids get that. And I, I was very fortunate. Um, and then once I got to West Ham, then I, I then I was on my own. I didn't have my dad. I was on my own and I then had to make my own way. But um, yeah, no, I mean, I love, love scoring goals. It's, it's the best, best thrill in the world. The best, it's the one feeling I can't get in life. I can't, I can't walk out the front door here and go and get the same thrill of scoring a goal. I, I will never, ever be able to replicate that. That's what I miss about football. And looking ahead to the World Cup, mm -hmm. <coughs> who would you play in your position to score the goals? Uh, what, for England? Um, well, I, I, I'd love to, I'd love to see a, a young Michael Owen or a, a Robbie Fowler, but they're, they're not about anymore. So uh, England will play with Danny Sturridge up front, and Wayne Rooney will play just behind him, and then they'll have the midfield runners, the Sterlings, Lalanas, um, the Wilshires. I'm sure I've missed a few out. You know, Jordan Henderson's had a good season. There's lots of good players. Stephen Gerrard will be in the midfield, um, but we've got some good players, England. And I'm not saying we'll win the World Cup, but I think with a little bit of luck, England could go a long, long way. They really could. Um, there'll be problems, you know, the weather will be problems for, for English players and European players. Um, different country, different culture, we, we understand all that, but on their day, they can give any team a good game. I think they proved that. They went out to Brazil last year, drew two all in a friendly, you know, and that was against what will be one of the favourites. So I think they can do well up front, Sturridge and Rooney, but. You know, like I say, it's just a shame we haven't got somebody who, you know is a, a guaranteed goal scorer who would um, would help us to go and win the World Cup.